Hello and welcome back to facecheck.co.uk The first few videos I've uploaded had an issue with the sound being a little bit too quiet but hopefully I can fix it for this and any future videos so people won't have to turn the noise up to the max <laughs> Let's just get on with the game shall we? So here I'm playing Next Design which I mentioned in the last video is my favourite corp um, I play it almost all the time uh, people have come to expect it from me I'm well aware that it's uh, not as good as the Corset HBID, Engineering the Future, as it struggles to get enough money to do a lot of the things that HB want to do. Uh, here I mulligan a 2 ice starting hand into a 1 ice starting hand, uh, something that happens far, far too often for a deck that's running 23 pieces of ice. I do have it as a guard though, uh, which is a sentry with end the run and cannot be bypassed. Now, Quetzal's ability lets them get past a barrier, um, so having an end the run sentry might actually let me sneak out one of these ABTs and hopefully secure a, a better lead at the start. Uh, here I made a small mistake by installing in the wrong remote, uh, so I just take that back and put it underneath the guard. Um, I did play this deck earlier in the day, uh, the Quetzal deck. I know that they're running uh, Parasite Recursion and Data Sucker for Ice Destruction. They've got Frost for getting through whatever bits of ice remain. Uh, so I'm going to just try and rush it out. Uh, our previous game came down to the last couple of turns. Uh, I could not find an agenda. Uh, they were down to a single card after levying um, and could not get into R&D easily, except I had two Architects and an Eli over R&D. Uh, letting the Architects fire meant that I had to either install over the top of Agendas or uh, just let them get the points with the, the Medium. Um, if I'd done enough math, there were two Jacksons in Archives that I could have also installed for shuffling back. Um, but in the end, it was a little bit of a headache, and, and they beat me 7-2, uh, seven, seven I think, in the end. So I'm already at the same score <laughs> that I was last game, and knowing what I know, I'm going to try and rush out another agenda. Um, again, I'm using knowledge of previous games to influence this game. Uh, last time I put a, a melange into a heavily guarded remote and clicked for credits a lot. Here I'm doing the opposite, assuming that they're going to think that it's a melange, uh, or at least that they've not found their breakers yet, uh, which is just Frost. Um, I got quite lucky by firing the first ABT. I've never not fired an ABT, um, unless the, the game really hinged on it. Um, quite a silly move. I, I had nothing to protect archives with. Uh, if, they, if I've been seven points of agendas, then that was game over there. Then drawing into both Architect and Lotus Field, uh, two bits of ice that can't be parasited away. Uh, I've actually managed to get myself into a, a reasonable position quite early and I'm going to see if I can capitalise on that uh, by, by scoring out the, the last few points. Uh, next ice here is obviously very, very, very weak. Uh, I do run pretty much the full sweep. Uh, three next bronze, three next silver one Mother Goddess and one Next Gold. Um, having multiple Next Gold can be good, but it's a very expensive piece of ice to raise and it's really there for, for a trap, uh, especially in this instance when they've got a, an AI breaker, it's not going to do me any extra good. Um, so I'm not at a disadvantage. The agenda sweep for this uh, deck's very small. Uh, there's only eight agendas. I'm running three accelerated beta tests, one Eden fragment, uh, one Hades fragment, one mandatory upgrades, and two priority requisitions. Um, this is really dictated by the amount of ice that you need in your deck to get that early start of three installs. Uh, with 23 ice, 26 is, is technically the optimal for exactly three pieces of ice. If you go to 27, you're more likely to have four pieces of ice, uh, which you may not want. Um, so I'm just under the, the optimal amount for finding three, uh, but 
but any more than 23 and there's not enough space left in the deck to have the, the rest of the things that you need economy uh, assets traps if you need them um, I'm actually running three reversed accounts in this deck as well um, prior to Faust if you were able to keep the, the runner poor uh, they couldn't get through all the ads uh, now it's not so good uh, and the reason they were originally in there is that they were proxying for Jackson Howards in real life um, I've kept them in because they worked uh, but I think I'll be looking at perhaps swapping them out and getting something in its place uh, with the current Arnark heavy meta especially leaning towards Faust uh, they're not going to do me that much good uh, here the, the runner comes in and rightly trashes my uh, melange. It's uh, too dangerous to leave it sitting. If I can simply uh, click for money all the time, I'll be able to res all the ice and there won't be so much pressure on me. Um, you'll see there I also have motion notions. Uh, I just motioned out an aggressive secretary. Again, I want to slow him down as much as I can. If I can get rid of his breakers and his data sucker, it's going to uh, make it difficult for him. Uh, here I wish it was more a, a cerebral overwriter um, because with four points scored, uh, th there's no way you can leave a three advanced uh, card just sitting because uh, otherwise it could be the end of the game next turn. Um, and so here he's uh, complaining that now he's got to run that. So we're at a gym bug, he'd be dead. Uh, but as it is, it's an aggressive secretary to, to get rid of the programs. But he's already got a clone chip then. Uh, so he'll be able to recur Faust uh, just when he wants. And then he parasites onto the guard, which is only strength two, uh, to, to get rid of it later. Now, uh, also running a single swordsman in this deck. Uh, might consider bumping that up, considering how prevalent uh, AI breakers are at the moment. Um, I don't know if I'm running Turing. In fact, I'm not. So I should probably consider that as an option for protecting remotes. Um, very good against uh, Quetzal and uh, any runner will, will struggle getting into a remote if they're relying on Crypsis or, or Faust. Uh, the only weakness to that, though, is that it would be strength 5 and David gets past it. Um, Apart from Heimdall, I don't 1.0. I don't have any strength five or above ice. Um, I have two Heimdalls, and that means a, a David install is almost pointless. So here I find a, a Jackson Howard. Uh, I'll put that in a remote. I'll force him to run, keep his card level down, and then just before he accesses, obviously Jackson away and, and bring back a few cards. Uh, again, I'm just trying to bait him into losing his Faust uh, and slowing him down a little that way. So here, um, I see in his heap that he doesn't have any, he doesn't have a mimic uh, or anything that can break swordsman. Uh, so I think I'm good to fire. However, he is thinking now. There's an opportunity to pump breakers before encountering, uh, and here we've. Or I've said uh, that that must also apply to, to Faust. You can bin a card in order to pump the strength. So if here if he bins a Mimic, he can clone chip the Mimic out and then break the Swordsman. Um, I don't see why that wouldn't be the case, but I'll, I'll look up the, the rules later. Uh, and that's actually a very, a very, very clever use of Faust and clone chips. Um, not something I'd considered before but uh, definitely something that can get you out of pickle uh, if Swordsman comes up or similarly any uh, card in your or any program in your hand that you want to be able to play during a run so here he, he lets it fire he can clone chip after getting past Swordsman and then later he'll uh, parasite away the, the Swordsman and um, He's already most of the way through his deck. Uh, the way it works is he'll power through, put a lot of early pressure on, then use Levy, 
and then do the whole thing again. Uh, so it tends to be a bit of a race. Uh, last game we played, uh, the it was more of a, a marathon, and it very much did come down to those last couple of runs and the, the choice of ice that I'd put on R&D instead of uh, moving some from the, the scoring remote over. Um, there makes a run, as I said, on Jackson, baited it out, using up another clone chip, really just trying to put myself in the best advantage uh, position that I can um, because I can't really stop Faust from, from getting in anywhere. Um, so now I need to find another agenda, uh, shore things up a little on the scoring remote and hopefully get out the win. Now the problem here you'll see is I have to score a three point agenda or another two two point agendas. However, my second or fourth two point agenda, whatever you want to look at it, is mandatory upgrades. Uh, a six cost two point agenda uh, and that is just not likely to happen. Uh, even harder to score than the three points. So what I'm going to think about doing is digging for more ice, uh, more money and building a ridiculous scoring remote that will take too many cards for Faust to get through. Uh, that said, he has got E3 feedback filters out. Uh, once a, a subroutine on a piece of ice is broken, uh, you can pay one credit to break a, another subroutine on that piece of ice and then it triggers itself so you can then pay your way uh, through all the, the subroutines on a single piece of ice. Now have a quick scout of what's over HQ, um, a res IQ which is a, a pretty good code gate. Uh, it's only strength 2 at the moment but its strength is equal to the number of cards in hand. Uh, as I draw up more cards that will get stronger um, and then ideally uh, you know, be quite a tax for, for Faust to get through. And then Mother Goddess, worth resing, um, I'm running next ice, it does count as a piece of next ice, it counts as a piece of uh, every kind of ice. So at the moment it's a sentry code gate um, AP, is Swordsman AP? Yeah, anti-personnel. Um, but as he's using an AI breaker anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, the use of this is slightly different than in my biotech deck mythic. Um, this time it is really just a, an extra number for the next suite of ice. Uh, next silver will get an extra subroutine, next bronze will get an extra uh, one strength from it and next gold will be able to do one extra damage and trash one extra program. Um, I'm now quite low on credits however. I could purge. Um, I was hoping he'd miss the Hades fragment the first time he ran and then I probably would have purged. Keep the swordsman alive one more turn and just reduce the number of uh, tokens on nerve agent so you, you can't get back in and see the, the two or three cards that were in my hands. Uh, as it is I just took money, um, had to let the swordsman go, it's, it's quite weak, um, I'm not going to hang around for particularly long and then I'll try and build up the scoring remote again. So play a hedge fund and then start installing over server zero there. I consider installing the last card but I want to leave a little bit of mystery. Uh, if he wants to waste his time coming into HQ uh, then that's fine. You can see as many bits of ice as he likes. Um, my operations for this deck are three hedge funds uh, just for an early burst of money. I have two Mushin Notions. Um, Although, though, as I said, the only real traps I have are Aggressive Secretary. Uh, reversed Accounts with three advancements on it would lose 12 credits for the runner if they don't go check it out. Uh, and sometimes they, they won't. They're, they're scared of the, the damaging traps that HB run. Cerebral Overwriter uh, doing one brain damage for every advancement token on it. Um, and for them to spend the turn building up and then just suddenly we have 12, credit, 12 or 15 credits wiped off them. Um, or 16 since it goes in fours uh, can sometimes be a, a pretty good surprise and give you uh, an extra couple of turns and that scoring window that you need um, it's only one influence uh, coming out of MBN but as I said I think for the next version I'll, I'll 
drop them, uh, perhaps even look at bringing in Marcus Batty's. Uh, that way, getting a guaranteed, uh, well, not a guaranteed, but play the side game to fire a, a next goal, either net damage or, or trash programs, can pretty much swing the game uh, entirely. Uh, here he's managed to get most of his rig up. Um, medium is kind of how he beat me last time. Uh, two mediums out uh, and just going for digs in R&D. Uh, it was a very long time until I saw any agendas uh, in the last game and everything was in the bottom nine cards. Um, as I said, I lost that one and now looking for a little payback. So you're drawn to another architect. Uh, I do consider what it will take to, to put it over uh, R&D. Uh, it's it's non-trashable ice again. Uh, however, that did get me into trouble last time, so I was a little reluctant. Plus, I have no money to, to do so. It cost me three credits, because there's already three bits of ice on R&D, and then I need another four credits to res it. So that's another turn of clicking for credits, and uh, another next turn after that to install it. Here I've just baited the run into uh, the Jackson again. Uh, I noticed he was very low on cards. Um, R&D kind of doing its work there. Um, and this time, I'll, same as last, I will pop the Jackson and put back in a couple of cards that I want. Um, now that I've got six bits of ice rest, the, the peak efficiency is a, a better deal than uh, hedge funds can also fire it with less credits. I put the swordsman back because um, the more I can do to slow him down, the, the better things will be. I also put an aggressive secretary back uh, and he sees that. Um, but what I really want uh, is to, to trash all of his programs. And the threat of that in his mind uh, will hopefully come into to play a little later. So here I pull a mush in, but nothing to, to mush in out. Um, so my best bet is to stop any further deep digs into to R&D. He'd probably spend this turn building up, I'll spend my turn building up. Um, he's slightly better set up than I am, but uh, depending on what cards come up, I'll, I'll look at improving scoring remote and R&D protection. Uh, very little point in keeping cards in hand. He can get in probably a couple of times a turn, and that way we're able to see one card followed by two new cards. The dream would be to have a, a secure remote and a secure R&D and just as soon as you see an agenda, move them between the two. So here I'm up to seven credits, which is uh, still not a lot. Most of my ice is moderately expensive. I have no biotic labors. Um, I, I'm not looking to fast advance out any accelerated beta tests or project Vitruviuses, uh, not least of which because I don't run any Vitruviuses. Um, it, it would be possible uh, to perhaps run a, a slightly faster advanced version of this, but putting in more 3 2 agendas uh, increases the number of cards that have to go towards agendas, at which point uh, it becomes very difficult to fit in anything else that I want to do. Now, I consider raising the next silver here. Um, it stops sort of free accesses into archives to build up the data sucker. Um, with the Mother Goddess raised, uh, you would use his ability, then pay one using E3 feedback filters. Didn't really seem worth it. Uh, if he was going to make a run on R&D this turn, um, he might want to save it for the Eli. But uh, I decided I'd bit rather have a threat of having some money. And luckily, uh, that might work out to my advantage. Now here I'm mushing out of priority requisition. Uh, I know that if it goes to the long game, I'm in a world of trouble. Um, here I also use my last click to advance it. Uh, knowing that he's got six programs out and he knows that I've got aggressive secretaries, uh, he may be thinking that that is a, another aggressive secretary doing the same thing I did last time. So it's really putting the, the, the runner to a decision. Uh, they've used uh, clicks one and two uh, to, to levy. Same old thing, levy, I think. Um, 
No, the click. He used Katie Jones for money, then they levied. Only leaves on two clicks, and then he's ran on R&D, which he can definitely get in. Um, I wasn't quite celebrating here. Uh, I knew I had one click left, uh, but if he did use cards to get in, uh, that wouldn't leave him very well protected were that a cerebral overwriter. So here I'm kind of hoping that he's made the decision that that's not an agenda and isn't going to run it. It's a gutsy move, uh, you know, mushing out something naked and just hoping for the best, uh, especially a, a three-point agenda. Uh, but the runner knows that I know that he knows that I'm on sort of game point at this point. And then he finds that single mandatory upgrades. Now here I won't thinking that's to my detriment. If he knows that I'm running mandatory upgrades, he might think I'm trying to sneak one of those out and uh, go and run it. However, he doesn't. Uh, I advance it uh, and score the final three points for the win. Um, now, the only reason I won the game was almost entirely because I'd played him earlier. Um, if I didn't know what his deck did, it's a very good deck. He plays it very well. Uh, and uh, I almost certainly would have lost the game. Um... What I look at changing in the deck is making it probably a little faster um, or perhaps have some more punishing traps uh, with the increase in Faust. I'll maybe swap out an aggressive secretary or some reversed accounts for a cerebral overwriter and then that puts more of a decision on the runner once, perhaps once they've seen them in archives or in R&D as to, to what they want to do. Uh, but that's it, that's uh, another game done. Uh, I'll be looking at doing another one tomorrow evening and hopefully get some feedback from you kind people as to, to what you'd like to see on the show.